Good morning, all. Um, so first off, apologies. Um, my talk is going to be much shorter than anticipated. Um, a number of my team members um, weren't available today. Uh, so I'm just going to go over a general overview uh, of Fedora IoT. And if you were here um, at the release party, it, it's going to look a little familiar. Uh, so let's just get started. Uh, so what is Fedora IoT? Um, it is a focused on small edge devices. Uh, we support x86 and ARCH64. 32-bit uh, ARM was deprecated in Fedora 36, uh, but it is still supported in Fedora 36. Uh, it's, uh, we focus, it's an RPM OS tree based operating system with no graphical user interface. Um, if you need that, there are other offerings uh, like Silver Blue and Kinote. Um, and we focus on container workflow. So you can install software and you can layer uh, different softwares on top of the, the operating system, but we do uh, suggest that you use containers um, rather than layering software. And we've also got a fo strong focus on security, um, which you'll see, and we're gonna be expanding that uh, in Fedora 37 and, and going forward. Uh, so the hardware we support, uh, UEFI is a requirement. Um, we do uh, recommend that you have a TPM2 and a hardware watchdog as well. Uh, for ARCH64, we support a number of edge devices um, and various um, classes of edge servers. Uh, we also support the NVIDIA Jetson Xavier and NX. Uh, we are working at adding uh, the Nano as well. Um, hopefully that'll be added in Fedora 37. Uh, we support the Raspberry Pi 3 and 4 and all the different variants of those two. Um, the Pine 64, a um, couple different variants there, the Rock Pro and the, the Rock 64, uh, as well as the Hummingboard M from Solid Run. Uh, for x86, the, we test and uh, we focus on the Compli Lab Fitlet 2. Um, it does have a TPM2 uh, with it. Um, so it's a great little device. Uh, the up squared, uh, as well as any generic x86 64-bit platform uh, should work just fine uh, in Fedora IoT. And so Fedora IoT is the upstream for RHEL for Edge. Um, there was a, a brief gap there where most of the development was happening in RHEL. Uh, we've moved that back to Fedora now. Um, there are major improvements coming from RHEL for Edge, including OS build enhancements um, and industry standards like FIDO device onboarding. Uh, ARM is also involved uh, with Fedora IoT, um, including System Ready, Project Cassini, and Parsec. We've supported Parsec for a number of releases, uh, one of our, our features. Uh, so in Fedora 37, the IoT edition, again, we're adding FIDO device onboarding. Uh, signed RPM contact contents um, by I, with IMA. Uh, the IoT artifacts are going to be created using using OS build, uh, and there are a bunch of different enhancements to Greenboot. So, what is Greenboot? Uh, Greenboot's a health check framework for System D uh, for OS tree based installations. I don't think anyone else is using it yet. Uh, what it does is when the system boots up, it runs a series of health checks to ensure that everything's functioning properly. Uh, if not, it rolls back to the last known good configuration. Uh, you're able to add in your own little bash scripts uh, for personalized health checks. Um, by default, it, it checks to see if you can reach the update servers. Um, but in Fedora 37, and I'm not sure if it's coming back to 36, but definitely in 37, you're going to have the ability to monitor uh, different system D services. Um, so there's going to be a config file and you can add in a service that's uh, important to you and, and that you need to make sure is working uh, by default. I think it includes uh, SSHD. Uh, that's a big one. Of course, you want to contact uh, your, your equipment, uh, you'll need that to come up. If it doesn't come up, it'll roll back into the last known good configuration. Uh, so something that was just recently enabled in Fedora 37 is IMA, that's the Integrity Measurement Architecture. Um, so what that does is at runtime, it verifies the files um, the, that are being executed are what the build system produces. 
Um, if it's not uh, exactly as the build system produces it, it will prevent any execution. Uh, this was the security feature in Red Hat Enterprise Linux 9 uh, that just came uh, out recently. And in Fedora IoT, we're going to ship uh, little sample uh, policies for users to either use as is or adapt uh, to their needs. Um, again, this is a new accepted change in Fedora 37 uh, and brand new to Fedora. Uh, we'll also support uh, FIDO device onboarding. So that allows for zero touch onboarding of devices with roots of trust and chains of trust. Um, it's a new open standard that's uh, derived from Intel. Uh, secure device onboarding. Um, there's lots of involvement from industry leaders, like the big ones, Intel and ARM. Um, and Red Hat is a member of the FIDO IoT working group and actively uh, involving or evolving that standard. Um, so in Fedora, we have a clean imp imp implementation written in Rust. Um, and this is brand new change for Fedora 37 as well. Uh, so Fedora IoT is going to move to OS build. Uh, we're going to be the first ones to be using OS build. Uh, we're working on that right now. Um, the Fedora IoT artifacts will be produced uh, with OS build in Fedora 37. Uh, that includes the installer ISOs and the raw disk images. Um, hopefully that'll be enabled soon, uh, maybe uh, as soon as next week, at least the installer ISOs, we hope. Uh, so users are able to create their own customized images and OS tree repositories using image builder and OS build. Um, and this is a, a brand new change in Fedora 37 uh, for us. And I think other, um, uh, other additions will be moving to it uh, shortly after that as well. Um, in Fedora 37, we're adding simplified provisioning. Uh, so you're able to create, uh, or the image is created in OS build. Um, you can pr provision your system through the network, USB, uh, disk, or provision in a factory. Um, and it will allow for identical deployments across a number of different devices. Um, and will allow for uh, features like predefined encrypted file systems. So the system is pre-encrypted and once installed on your local system, it re-encrypts it um, uh, so that it's nice and secure for your local system rather than uh, some predefined uh, encryption. So how are we doing all this? Um, we've got a bunch of new team members, including myself. Uh, I joined the RHEL for Edge team earlier this year. Um, we've also got a, a number of other people. Um, again, the Fedora IoT is going to be the upstream uh, for RHEL for Edge um, after a long departure. Um, we've also got an intern that's helping us uh, with the outreach program. She's doing fantastic work. Uh, thank you very much. Um, also looking for more community involvement uh, from people like you. Um, we especially need help testing. Um, previously, I was the uh, QE lead uh, in Fedora IoT. That's now been taken over by Jeffrey Marr. Um, he's doing a great job, uh, but always can use some assistance in, in making sure everything works. And if you're interested in contributing, uh, you can join us on the IRC and Pound Fedora IoT. Um, we do have a weekly meeting in uh, Pound Fedora meeting. Uh, we've got a mailing list. Um, you can report any issues to GitHub um, and all the different IoT features are listed there and our documentation is, is rolled into the official Fedora documentation. And that's what I got for today, folks. Uh, again, I apologize. It's a lot shorter than we had anticipated, um, but a number of team members are out today. Uh, so I did my best to sort of give you some general information. Um, does anyone have any questions? How can we get more users? Uh, Matthew, that is, uh, I think that um, some of the features that we're gonna be uh, including in Fedora 37 are um, of great interest to a lot of people. Uh, we've been getting a number of people coming in and asking about the FIDO device onboarding. Um, so I think that that will attract uh, new users. Um, and uh, some of the security features, I think that uh, people will uh, appreciate the security features that we've got coming in Fedora 37. 
And the next question from Matthew again, will I be winning my bet with Neil about OS build image builder and production for the official? I believe so. So um, uh, I guess Neil had a bet uh, with uh, Matthew that OS build uh, wouldn't be released um, or ready. Uh, I think that you will be winning that bet. Um, there are some, some hitches we've hit uh, in sort of the final run up um, to Fedora 37, but uh, I think that uh, the image builder team should be able to work through that. And how can I preview, oh, where did that go? How can I preview access to OS build in Fedora? So currently um, OS build in Fedora is, it's not yet available. Um, it will be a small section. I, I guess you have to have image build privileges in Koji um, and I, there is discussions about expanding that further, um, but I'm not aware uh, of where that'll be. Any other questions today? Oh, they're at the top there. Okay. What are the differences? I'm not familiar with uh, Yakto, um, I, so I'm not familiar with what the differences would be. How do you feel about moving the Fedora IoT discussion primarily to discussion fedoraproject.org. I'm fine with it. It's um, certainly just another place that we have to um, check. Um, but, but yeah, that, I'd be certainly okay with that. Uh, and where is Fedora, Fedora IoT expected to be useful? Uh, so edge devices, um, everybody sort of using, a lot of people are running uh, different containers um, for local services, home assistant. Uh, I think there is a home assistant uh, demonstration a little bit later on today um but uh, it's expected to be useful at the edge um for uh, any sort of edge devices uh using it uh, with different sensors uh in you know in your backyard uh to to um measure the the temperature and humidity things like that and do we are you planning to focus on low RAM device with less than one gigabyte of RAM? Uh, so yes, the lower um, RAM devices should work okay. I think that um, the Raspberry Pi Zero uh, Two, uh, which I believe has 512 megs of RAM, is working um, okay. I had uh, with standard Fedora, um, I was able to use smaller devices with 256 megs of RAM. Um, so that should certainly be possible. Um, I, I think that more testing is needed there. I'm not aware of, uh, I haven't been doing any testing with lower uh, RAM devices. Is there a chance that ARM support could return in the future? Uh, so that I, I guess that's 32-bit ARM um, because we do su support 64-bit ARM. 32-bit um, uh I, I don't think that'll be coming back. Um, there was a number of limitations that uh, we had in supporting the 32-bit RAM, the biggest being uh, the enterprise hardware um, wasn't supporting 32-bit um, any, any longer. Uh, we were having trouble finding hardware for the build system. Um, but also, uh, you know, the devices are pretty cheap for a 64-bit ARM device. Uh, so we encourage people to, to sort of move to 64-bit rather than 32-bit. Uh, is going to be a firmware device for devices or APIs for applications? Uh, I don't think that we're getting into the firm. I mean, we do provide some firmware in Fedora, um, but I'm not aware of anything being added. I feel like ARM devices seem mostly aimed at ARM device enthusiasts, um, like sold as bare metal boards. ARM device enthusiasts like sold as bare boards that is a project in itself. Uh, I agree with you um, to get working. Do you see that changing in the future or something in a uh, nice case just to put on an SD card and go? So, um, it's actually gotten a lot better. Uh, so when I started uh, working on Fedora ARM, um, we offered a, a pre-canned root file system that you had to bring your own kernel for, um, and you'd explode that 
you know, onto an SD card and install your kernel to get the system to boot. So it, it has gotten a lot better. Um, we could definitely use some additional tooling uh, for creating the disk images. We currently use a, a horrible bash script that I wrote a long time ago uh, for myself that uh, people encourage me to uh, put out there because we had nothing else. So if you are interested in writing something, we certainly would love to see the uh, Fedora ARM installer replaced at some point in the future. Uh, what hardware would you recommend uh, for getting into Fedora IoT? Um, I think the Raspberry Pi 4 is a uh, great device. We have, um, we are going to be supporting that in Fedora fully for Fedora 37. Um, sort of the big limitation there was uh, graphics. Um, we didn't want to say that it was supported um, fully um, because the graphics uh, weren't accelerated. That's changing. Um, Peter Robinson has been doing great work to, to get that enabled in Fedora. It has worked great as an IoT device um, for a, a while. Um, again, it's just sort of the, the graphical limitation was just holding us back. Um, so, or if you've got, I mean, it, you can start to just play with it on a virtual machine is a great way to just sort of get started and, and take a look at it. Um, and, and then if you're interested in continuing, um, Raspberry Pis uh, are great devices. Raspberry Pi 3 even, um, it, you know what, at this point, it's hard to get your hands on something like that um, uh, because of the supply chain issues. I think hopefully that should be changing. Uh, since it supports container workload, is Fedora opinionated about how containers run on the image? Um, not that I'm aware of. Um, freedom is one of our tenants, so uh, do as you will. Um, you know, you might run into issues, but uh, let us know if you do. So I, I don't know that we have any strong opinions about that either way. What about uh, Risk Five? Uh, so, well, it's not yet supported in Fedora. Um, but uh, I think we would love to support RISC-V when uh, it is uh, another architecture that's uh, in Fedora. Definitely. I I'm very interested. I actually have a RISC-V device that I haven't really gotten any usage out of um, and I uh, would love to get that working in Fedora. Uh, you're working with some Beagle boards, still true. So uh, in um, the Beagle, Bones, uh, BeagleBone Black, BeagleBone White, our 32-bit ARM devices, um, they should, uh, I'm not sure if they work. Um, you need a firmware to, uh, provided DTB, our device tree blob. Um, they do work great with standard Fedora, um, but I'm not sure if they're working uh, with Fedora IoT. It wasn't something that uh, we, we are actively testing. Um, uh, for Fedora IoT, but it, it, they may work. work. I'm, I'm just not sure offhand. Is there any chance of getting Fedora IoT to run on ECS Leva Minibox QC710? I have no idea. I've not heard of that particular hardware. Um, if it uh, has uh, UEFI, uh, I'm not sure what architecture that is either, but it might work and it might work well. Um, I just don't know. Apologies. Uh, if you were to have an opinion about how to best run containers, which would it be, uh, System D or Microcube? Um, I don't have an opinion as to which way is the best to run containers. Um, but, uh, so I, I'm not opinionated there at all. Uh, if I had to go with one of the two, I would say System D. All right. Well, I don't see any new questions. Um, so again, I thank you for joining the talk today. I apologize um, that it wasn't quite the talk that we were hoping to give. Um, and we look forward uh, to presenting as a larger team uh, at a future Nest event. Um, so thank you very much.